Okay, welcome to February 2020. We are here and into our first photography video of the year, making these videos a far more regular thing and getting myself a hell of a lot more confident in front of the camera, hopefully. Today I thought we'd talk about camera basics, I suppose would be the way to put it. I'm just gonna go through what some of the buttons on your camera need. Not necessarily what they do exactly into too much detail, I just wanna go over the kind of generic basics and go over what my kind of three pillars of photography are. But to begin with, we'll go with <laughs> the very, very basics. Every camera should have one of these. If it doesn't, I'd be very worried about it. Your shutter button. So this is what triggers your shutter to take the exposure, to take a photograph on the sensor. What you're gonna push, it's the most used button on the camera, I would argue. Beyond that, you flip the camera upwards and we will have a nice top view of it where you have almost, you'll have a mode dial button. This will have all your different modes that your camera has. It can go from your manual mode to your shutter priority mode your aperture priority mode, and you'll have a couple of programmable modes on there as well. So beyond your manual, your shutter priority, your aperture priority, your programmable mode, most cameras will have a scene mode. Even the professional cameras have this. It's kind of like the baked in stuff that the camera companies think, here, we know how to make this camera work. Let's just set a preset mode. A lot of the buttons will be the same across the cameras. You'll have your menu, your info buttons. You'll have your playback buttons. Um, those, you know, to go back through your cameras, it's usually a little square with a play symbol on it. That's kind of universal across all cameras. Um, yeah, that's kind of the, the basics on what a lot of the buttons are that you'll find. Um, you, after a while, basically, these become an extension of yourself. You, you just use it without thinking. Tea sip for good measure, you know? I make tea for myself all the time. I'm just saying to Sarah, like, Tea tastes better when somebody else makes it. Just doesn't matter who it is. When somebody makes you a cup of tea, it tastes better than your own cup of tea. And not say I don't, I, I, I like my tea. This is on anyway, so the basics of photography. So you heard me talking about your aperture and shutter there. You have your shutter speed, your aperture, and your ISO. Those will be the three main things that are gonna influence how your photographs turn out and how you're gonna, you know, smack your style on those photographs. First off, your shutter speed. That's how long you expose your sensor. That is, whether it's an 8,000th of a second or it's for 30 seconds, is usually the scope they go to. Basically, the longer your exposure, you're gonna end up blurring stuff up because the sensor is exposing the light a lot more. You wanna freeze something, you want a fast shutter speed that'll freeze motion. Aperture, you've got a little diaphragm on your lens. It opens up or closes depending on how you do it. The larger your opening, the more light it lets in. So you go anything from f1.4 uh, and then that can go down to f22. But the confusing thing about aperture is the smaller the number, the more open your aperture is. Just know that the more open your aperture is, the more light you're gonna get in. Next, last but not least, ISO. This was the one that confused me most, I think. And just because I never knew what it did, I just knew if I put the number up, it makes my photos brighter, um, but it makes them look really hideous. Um, I think I heard another guy call it Swiss cheese mode when you put it up really high. Basically, it's the control of how sensitive your sensor is to the light that's coming into it. You have a high ISO, it's a lot more sensitive. Low ISO, it's less sensitive. So, you know, in your dark situation, you want a highly sensitive sensor. High ISO, yeah, gives you a better low light performance at the expense of grain or noise. Grain, is it not grain? Grain would be different, no, noise, at the expense of noise. Um, that's kind of the way it is, so. Depending on your camera, your ISO will kind of vary. Uh, different sensors perform differently with ISO ranges. So you could have three or four cameras that shoot the exact same shutter speed and aperture with the same lens, but those cameras may perform differently in ISO range. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope you're enjoying my channel at the minute, taking it down this new direction, giving it a little bit more of a push in the correct direction. If you enjoyed it, like the video, leave a little comment down below and let me know what you enjoyed about it or what you want to talk about in another video perhaps. Beyond that, you can always subscribe or follow me on Instagram as well. Uh, I post stories and stuff on there daily. Um, next video should be a vlog, I think. I'm going to try and mix it up a little bit every day. So if you didn't enjoy this, there should be something coming for you in the coming days. Thank you very much and good night. Hmm.